I was talking to uh, Deuce Vaughn's high school coach last week, and he mentioned that you were the first guy at K-State to actually swoop in on him and start uh, recruiting him a little bit. Can you tell me about that story, how you spotted him, and uh, I guess what? How you, would you end up getting him to K-State? Well, um, I think it was a, a, family, uh, a family recruiting when it comes to Deuce. But, you know, when you, when you walk in as a, as a recruiter, you're always concerned with the measurements, you know, of, of a young man. Well, Deuce, uh, initially, he does not fit the measurements of uh, the prototypical running back. Although here at Kansas State, we've had some that don't fit others, uh, and they've been really, ex uh, they've been really successful. So I knew that I would have to uh, convince Coach Anderson that uh, no matter if this guy looked like a little kid, uh, he played like a man, and fortunately. It worked out. I, I got a hypnotist, and uh, Coach Anderson agreed, and here we are. Um, did it surprise you more schools down there in his neck of the woods weren't uh, recruiting him harder? Well, you know, like, like I said, he, he is a phenomenal player. He was in high school, but, you know, when, when you concern yourself with uh, the metrics, the size, and, you know, the things that you're accustomed to as a, as a player, uh, or recruiting a player, then then sometimes you miss out on guys like Deuce. And we're extremely fortunate that we didn't because not only is he a really good football player, but he's uh, a great teammate and he always operates with, uh, with outstanding character and integrity. So across the board, we're excited that we, that we took advantage of being able to recruit him. Right, thanks a bunch, Coach. Appreciate it. John? Yeah, Van, is it safe to say that Echo, since he's gotten a chance to play, has shown you more than maybe what you guys expected out there on the field? Well, one of the things that uh, Echo and I actually had a conversation in, I guess we could call this fall camp. Uh, everything is different. But uh, there was a time period that we would have, in some other places, uh, considered it fall camp. And he and I had a conversation. And, you know, I told him that he was, he was getting better and that he just needed to stay on the path, you know, to continue to improve. And so when it came up where he had to start the game, um, I don't think he was concerned and, and neither were we as coaches. It was different than maybe we had planned, but um, he'd worked hard and he continues to work hard. And so, you know, just like we talked about Deuce Vaughn, you know, sometimes, here in COVID, you, you're surprised, you know, things happen, people uncover that you that you might not have planned on it. And so I, in a strange sort of way, this has been a good period for a lot of people. And, and you know, honestly, we challenged our players on our team to, you know, when, when we get locked out, go away and work on yourself, you know, work on, on the things that you know will help you uh, when, when you come back. And so it's the teams, that, that did that, you know, it's the players that did that. And Echo uh, right now is showing to be one of those players. And what's led to AJ having so much success at Nickel since you guys moved him over there? Well, he's a guy with a lot of experience. And, you know, when, you, when you've played a lot of football, when you've seen a lot of pictures, then it doesn't really matter what position back there, you know, you can fit in. And that's what AJ has shown. You can fit in and have success. Uh, he's played nickel before in his career, and so it, it, it it's an easily it's an easy transition uh, for because you know and I talk to the cornerbacks about it all the time, the fact that AJ understands the the troubles that a corner would have when the nickel doesn't sit in the curl, he's always in the curl, you know what I mean, and so things like that because he's had experience at different positions, kind of gives him insight and gives him an edge. Uh, to be able, you know, to play that position. Thanks, man. It's Coach, kind of building off some of that, um, Justin and Echo at corner and now AJ at, at nickel. How proud are you of your guys and how they've stepped up here in this strange season? Well, I've, I've always been proud of the way they work. And, and you know, when you, when you work as hard as they do, when you work as hard as A.J. does in terms of film study, in terms of preparing himself, and then echo a guy who has not seen a lot of playing time, but to, to continue to fight, to continue to come to work every day and not know when your name will be called. 
uh, that I, I have great pride in that because those are the things that we preach as coaches. You know, that's what the program is, is built upon. It's built upon continuing to work. Uh, it's built upon no matter what the score is, uh, you know, and so, so to see those guys have success, to see them to perform at the level that they are right now, it gives me extreme pride. But, you know, they also understand that we're not there. They're not there. And so we will have to continue to work every day because at those positions, you know, you're, you're one play away from get him out of there. Uh, and with that in mind, Justin Gardner has been, you really haven't had to say that because he's been pretty darn good. Uh, how good has he been? And also how nice is it to have a six foot two corner out there against these big receivers? Yeah, well, I, I think that, you know, his size is definitely a factor that, uh, that, that we like from a defensive staff point of view. But again, he, the young man works hard. They all do. And, and uh, I think that's, that's a big key is uh, the amount of effort and energy that they put into preparation each week. And so, you know, the challenge that we have this week is that we don't have an opponent. So this week, the opponent is us. And, and, and really, it's always that. But this week, the, the opponent is us. And so, so the challenge is, is how can we use this week, these few days, to get ourselves rested up, uh, but to get ourselves mentally prepared to charge on the rest of the way? Do these last two raised hands, starting with Derek? Hey, Coach, how has the first four games gone with, you know, coaching with Joe Klanerman, the defensive coordinator, aside from just Joe Klanerman, the safeties coach? It's been, it's been great. It's, it's been really, you know, that nothing's changed. Uh, Joe is who he's been. Uh, he's, he's a detail-oriented guy. He works hard. He, um, he relates well with the players. He, he relates well with the coaches in the staff room. And so there's, there's really been no change. Uh, I think, you know, Joe has done a great job of, of uh, leading and coordinating the plan. And, and I, I continue to look to him to grow in that position. So it's, it's, it hadn't been a change. It's been exactly uh, what we thought it would be. In terms of Justin Gardner, does that kind of recruiting reward feel a little bit better? Because you pr brought him in just to provide an instant impact, and that's exactly what he's done. Well, you know, I, I, when we recruited Justin and then, you know, some of the other guys, Key Andre, who hadn't played yet, uh, but uh, that's exactly what the, what the deal was, is that we needed those guys to come in and be a part of the rotation early. Uh, you know, when things happen with injuries and, and uh, situations that we're in right now, we don't know the timing of it all. And so it's been great. To, to see Justin step in, to see Echo step in. Uh, of course, Echo has been on this campus much longer than Justin. Again, we don't know the timing. So what I always tell my guys, it's not your job to, to direct the bike. It's your job to keep pedaling. And uh, when your name is called, you know, you be ready to go. And that's what those guys have done. Thanks, Coach. Last one here, Sully. Hey, Coach, you know, just kind of looking at the other side of the ball for the corners that you talked to and even just yourself, looking at Will Howard, how confident were you in him going to that TCU game, being a freshman, kind of just, you know, stepping back from Skyler, someone that is so experienced? And what do you think about him going forward? Well, you know, it's kind of funny. I've heard a coach say this a couple of times that from a defensive standpoint, our defensive players, we, we, we had not, you know, we had not had a second thought, you know, and I, and I would say that, from the offensive perspective, those guys didn't have a second thought when, when Echo had to go in the game or when Justin had to go in the game. And I think that's the culture of our team is that we all recognize from a coaches and players standpoint that the next guy just has to step in and, and we don't have time or the energy to uh, bother ourselves with who's in there. Uh, I think Will definitely is a capable player. Skyler is and, and has been our team leader. But one of the things that I said to Skyler early on in this situation is that, man, you have to be his biggest cheerleader. You have to be the first one to pick him up. You don't have time to worry about yourself. You have to make sure you're there for him. And I think Skyler has done that. Uh, and so, uh, 
man, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in Will. Uh, but, but there is also a challenge in the rest of the offense that, okay, we shouldn't make this hard for Will. You have to play better in different positions along the offensive unit to, to compensate for his inexperience. Defensively, we have to give them him the ball. Right. We have to give him more opportunities so he can settle in. So we're not going to put it on Will. We're going to put it on ourselves to play better so that we can give him more opportunities to to come into his own.